Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. Today I'm going to be potting up my elephant ear bulbs. I got bulbs from Sam's Club and bulbs from Lowe's. So we're gonna pot those up today and then possibly pot up my caladium bulbs that I got from Sam's Club. Um, there's a lot of caladium bulbs versus the elephant ear bulbs that I bought. So I don't know if I'll get to those today, but I, need to because i am behind on planting these things um typically i like to plant my elephant ear bulbs like mid february and my stores just got elephant ear bulbs in and caladium bulbs and you know those type of things so i'm running a little bit behind but it's fine um there's nothing i can do about it so let's go ahead and get these bulbs started so here are the caladium bulbs um that i bought this year Carolyn Wharton. I thought these were really pretty. Um, they had, this is, these are from Sam's Club. They had one other option for caladium and it was like a mixed bag of caladium. And I didn't really want um, the mixed variety of caladium. So I just got these two that match. And then I grabbed some astilbe. Um, astilbe is great for your shady, part shady areas in the garden. And I have a lot of, um, part shade to full shade area so I grabbed a box of those to get started so if I have time I'll start these today um, because it is time to get them going caladiums can take a while to um, wake up from dormancy I still be I would say these will probably be up in about two weeks or so I have started to still be from um, I think this comes in a root so I've done that before these wake up pretty easily these take a, a while here are my elephant ears, and these also take a while to wake up, which is why I prefer to wake them up in mid-February because by the time I plant them out in May, they'll be like, have lots of foliage growth on them. But, you know, it is what it is. We work with what we have. So I've got the Black Magic Elephant Ear, I got two. And then I got this bag of nine bulbs here. And then this one, um, this one is a cal Colocasia esculenta, and I'm pretty sure these are esculenta too. The only difference is the size of the bulbs. The soil that I'm gonna be using is ProMix soil here in the red bag. I'm gonna add some extra perlite to it to make it more well-draining. Um, that's important because you don't want your bulbs to rot in the pot. And then once you do plant your bulbs, you wanna water them in thoroughly and then allow that soil to dry down halfway. So let's say I planted a bulb in here, full of soil, water it in the first day, wait till that soil dries up to about here and then water, water it again. Cause my bulb is gonna go about this level in the pot and then this part will be soil. I want that soil to dry all the way down here before I give it another full drink. So the way to check for that is to, you know, zhuzh up the top layer. If it's dry, you know, dig down to the bulb a little bit. Don't disturb the bulb, meaning like don't scratch it or move it in any kind of way. Just push that soil around. If it's dry, go ahead and give it a water. Okay, so I know I said, let's get planting, but I have to show you one other thing before we get started. I'm gonna show you three different elephant ear bulbs and which way is the top of the bulb, which way you should plant it in the pot. That way, when you've got your own bulbs, you can figure it out easily. So the first bulb, this is the Black Magic Elephant Ear. And as you can see right here, it's got the rings. You've got some offsets. These are babies that were produced in the prior year. Um, these are attached to it. You don't want to detach them. I mean, you can, but um, for best results, I think just keep them together. So this is the top. And then you see at the bottom of this, you can already see where the roots were. Um, this is from last season's growth. So this you want to plant in your soil like that. So if I have a pot, I want this part to be facing up towards the light and then the root part to be facing towards the bottom. Now let's check out the next bulb. So I have this bulb right here. This is the Colocasia esculenta. And depending on what the bulbs look like, sometimes they can look really bad and you just don't know. 
sometimes they can be covered in root hairs and you just don't know what end is up you want to look for the rings kind of like an onion these bulbs will um, create rings the rings are layers of growth um, this is where the foliage came out so every new leaf that's produced you will get a ring and to tell the top from the bottom the top has the ring that's where the foliage comes out the bottom part looks a lot like this on mini bulbs it's very gnarly um, sometimes they have roots connected to them sometimes they don't like the other um, elephant ear bulb it still had the roots connected to it but in this case this is going to go towards the bottom this is going to go towards the top if you ever have a bulb that you're confused about you just don't know plant it on its side and it will still grow so the the foliage will come out like this and go up and the roots will just be kind of all over so um, if you're ever unsure plant it on its side so last but not least here's this bulb this bulb is actually telling you which way to plant it because it's got growth coming out already so you want this to face upwards to where this will be able to get some light um, through the soil that will tell this plant exactly where to grow the base you want to plant it down in the pot this is where your roots will come out of here and some roots will come out of the sides and you'll also have little nodes that wake up like that and that and those will also produce um foliage out they'll produce offsets and then you'll get excuse me you'll get new plants and um foliage coming out of the side so if you have any other questions you are welcome to email me about your elephant ear bulb but worst case you can't figure it out plant it on its side here is the largest bulb i would not plant this bulb into any of these containers just because there's not a lot of room in here around this bulb for it to grow, for the offsets that are gonna come out the sides and space for the roots to um, grow. Once your elephant ear bulb wakes up, it grows like crazy. The roots get out of control almost. So this bulb is too big for this one gallon planter. Now these small to medium sized bulbs will fit perfectly in these containers because they will this container will offer just the right amount of space for this bulb to thrive until i can get it outdoors so you want to pop it in nestle it down in there just like this one top bottom nestle that down in there here we have the top we know because we see the growth right bottom and we're gonna nestle the bottom down into this pot so that the bulb is about halfway down now we've got our next set of pots and we'll do the exact same thing top bottom top bottom top bottom and nestle those in this bulb is a little wonky you can see actually there's some softness here to this bulb so i it's possible that this bulb will and could wake up but because i'm feeling this softness here um i'm not going to plant this we're going to cover them in soil leaving a little lip around the top for when we water we don't want our soil to overflow out of the pot so we're going to leave just a little bit of a lip there.
Now time to pot the largest bulb that I have. And this pot is the perfect size for, I believe this is two gallons. And this gives this bulb enough room to grow out. It will be in this pot probably a good, what is it, February now? Potentially three to four months. So now that we've got our elephant ear bulbs all planted, I'm gonna water them in with warm water. Hang on, my chair is moving down. <laughs> oh, stay, stay, stay. So I'm gonna water these in with warm water. I'm gonna bring them upstairs to my dining room um, because it's warm in that room. You want them to have at least, at least a temp of 65 degrees so you could put them on a heat mat to increase that um, temperature um, or have them in a room that's warm i would say 65 is probably the coolest that you should have it 70 is probably optimal so if your room temperature is 70 degrees you should be okay put them in the bright light um, put them where it's warm uh, mine will be in a room right next to our heater um, that helps them warm up and I don't have enough um, heat mats or else I would put them on heat mats um, for caladiums definitely a heat mat or you know gotta be 70 or above I've had my elephant ears start you know where the temps were like in the 60s I've had them start that way and um, just fine it does take them a little bit longer so you've got you need the right lighting, you need the right room temperature. Um, I wouldn't water them with cold water at all um, uh, until they're like outside in your landscape. Um, and then you can water them with the hose water, that's normally cooler, that's fine. But while they're indoors and um, in your home to break dormancy, they've gotta be warm, they've gotta have light, and you've gotta maintain that for a certain period of time for the bulb to say, okay, it's spring, it's time for me to wake up. So as long as you maintain those things, your bulbs should wake up for you. If you are concerned about your bulbs, now if it's been like, you know, a month and you haven't seen any growth, I would definitely pull this soil back like that. And until you get to the bulb, press around the bulb, you know, make sure it's not soft, um, look for growth. Usually if you're pulling the soil back, you'll be able to see the top of that bulb and you'll be able to see if um, that growth node at the top is, has swollen up and it's waking up. You should be able to see that. Um, if you do see that, cover it right back up right away. If you don't see that, that's when you wanna go ahead and press on the soil, press on to the bulb just to make sure it's not rotten. So when I bring these upstairs, I'm gonna water them in like thoroughly with warm water. I will not water them again until this top of the soil is crumbly like this. Until it's dry like this, I will not water them again. Um, I will dig down and then until I find where the soil is moist again. And if this first portion of this is dry, then I will go ahead and give it a nice drink. You don't want to rot your bulb, so you want your soil to be well draining. Um, I know that's a fine line. This is why I like the Pro Mix soil. I added extra perlite into the soil just to help with drainage. Um, you don't have to do that, but just be very cautious with watering. Um, just wait till this is dry. Because typically when you dig down in there and you get to a certain point, you'll find that it's still very moist at the bottom half. As long as those bulbs still have moisture um, around them, they're fine. You don't have to flood them with water. Just wait until this top part has dried up and then go ahead and give them a drink. Give them a drink until you start to see water come out of the drainage holes and then stop the water. Um, and then put them right back in their spot and leave them until they need water again. That's the method that I use. Mine seems to wake up okay. I don't have a ton of issues with bulbs rotting at this point in, in the stage where you're trying to break them from dormancy. Usually I find that bulbs rot um, when I'm digging them up in the fall. I'll find that the main bulb has rotted and then it has produced a bunch of offsets. So that's usually where I find rot, rot but um, that's not an issue. That doesn't even 
that doesn't even pertain to right now. So anyways, let me know if you guys have any questions about starting your elephant ear bulbs and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. So this is what I want your soil to look like on top before you give your elephant ears some water. So let's just take a look. See how there is a separation from soil and pot? And then when I go like this, this soil is completely dry up here. Now, I know if I dig down a little deeper, um, there will be moisture in this pot still. This is a small container, so I'm not surprised that this um, will dry out much quicker than larger containers. So once you see that the top of the soil looks dry like that, go ahead and give it a full drink of water. Now let's look at a few more pots and we can talk about what to look for. So this right here, you see how the soil is still moist on the top? I have started to see some separation here, but this soil is still looking moist. It does not look dry at all. And the pot still has a heavy weight to it, so I'm not going to water this. Let's look back here. This bulb is actually sticking above the surface. That is the way I planted it. It had already started um, growing. So I just planted this portion above so that um, as it wakes up, it's already above the surface and the leaves start coming out that way. But you can see here, the top of this soil is very dry. And then once I dig down a little bit further, not too far, I do feel moistness here. So this pot can actually wait a bit. It does have a good weight, so I know down further, it's gonna be much more moist. This pot right here has a decent weight, so I know it's moist down here. You see that separation where the soil has dried up, and you see how dry this is at the top. This pot, I can definitely give a full watering. Even though it has a weight to it, I know it's moist down here, but I wanna wet this top of the surface. So go ahead and give it a full water until you see water coming out of the bottom and then stop and put it back in its place. I hope that helps you with watering. Let me know if you have any questions about um, watering your elephant ears while they're potted indoors.